So let's uh, restart the class. So we're going to talk about the international business cycle. So in a globalized economy, business cycles of many countries are correlated with the business cycle in the United States, especially. The financial markets in the world are getting more integrated. So the financial crisis in the US during the fall of 2008 led to a global financial crisis, called GFC for short, and economic contractions around much of the world. So we don't have to look back very far. We can look back to the global financial crisis. We can see that the US had a crisis, and many other countries had the crisis at the same time. So this is a graph showing the correlation of the countries. Okay? So this is GDP growth rate, here, GDP growth rate should be around 2 or 3 percent normally, okay? We're getting less now than it was before. We have, we're comparing Canada, the UK, Australia, and the US, all English-speaking countries, okay? Which country do you think should be the closest one to the US? Which economy should be the closest one to the US? When their GDP is growing, the US is growing. When their GDP is in recession, the U.S. is in recession. Canada. Canada, yes. Well, we have to ask which country does the U.S. do much trade, most trade with? Okay, <coughs> does most trade with Canada? Okay, Canada is next to the U.S. Then after Canada, which is after Canada, Australia or the U.K.? U.K. and then Australia, right? So the red line is. The U.S. Okay, so U.S. is growing. Other countries are growing. Here, the U.S. is growing very strongly. Canada is growing very strongly. Okay, uh, but at this point, the green line, Australia is not. Australia is in a recession. Okay, U.K. also here. Or sorry, yeah, U.S. is the blue line. It's sorry, purple line. So it's hard to see. This is the purple line here. And the red line is the UK and the blue line is Canada, right? So they're all high here, but Australia, UK, Canada, US, crisis. Okay, so we can see that they're, they're moving along together. So we can look at the recent one. Uh, the purple line, the US, the Canada, almost the same now, US and Canada, almost moving together, the purple and blue line, okay? Getting closer together over time. The UK also very similar, but we can see Australia didn't have a, any recession in the global financial crisis. Okay? There was a high price for gold and other materials, Australia's economy dependent on those ones. Okay? So we, we get the general picture, some countries more correlated than other countries, but the general uh, correlation. So here is the correlation in numbers. So GDP, do you understand correlation? How do you say correlation in Korea? Is that correct? You're shaking your head? <laughs> correlation means if this goes up, does this go up? If this goes down, does this go down? They're always the same, correlation is 1. They're kind of the same, it's 0 0.7, 0 0.5, okay? They're not the same at all, zero relationship. Okay, they're the opposite. When I go up, I go down. You go down, I go up. Then it's minus one, okay? <coughs> so, Australia, 0 0.5, Austria, 0.3. This is correlation with the US for output. Canada, 0 0.76, that's the highest one. Canada is the most correlated with the US. Okay, Germany, well correlated with the US. Okay, Europe, Switzerland, and Italy. So you can see how GDP is quite uh, well uh, correlated. Okay. 
So if countries are closer together, usually they do more trade, then it's more likely GDP will be affected in both countries. Okay? So the question we're asking is why? Why is the US and Canada very similar? Okay? So they're closer together, they do more trade. Okay? Capital flows. Is the money flowing easily between the two countries or is there something blocking it? Okay, is the money flowing easily from China to the US or is there something blocking the money? Blocking, blocking right? There's regulations. Chinese people can't invest in US stocks. US people can't invest easily in Chinese stocks, right? So there is some regulations blocking the money. So is it uh, money flowing in and out easily? Okay. And then the stock markets. We can see China had a stock crisis. We can see that stock markets <coughs> tend to rise and fall together. So it maybe it's psychological or uh, people just feel like if Chinese stock market is having a crisis, then it could be bad for the US companies in China and the US stock market starts to fall too. Okay? So the stock markets also tend to rise or fall together. Uh, <clears throat> when we talk about international business cycle, we mean if there's a certain number of countries in recession, then we're talking about global recession, right? The world is into recession. So, if we look at some examples, we have the Great Depression, the oil price shocks of the 70s. So, oil price is very global shock, okay? The oil price goes up. Uh, the current Great Recession. So if we go back here, we can see the 70s. We can see this here is a bad recession in the 70s. The oil price is <coughs> very high. We already saw that makes the cost higher for the business. They don't supply as much. Here we have, this was also, there was also, oil was also involved here. Oil was uh, getting very expensive, but mainly, according to Timothy Geithner, deregulation of the financial industry caused the financial industry to take on too much risk, okay? And the, we had the bankruptcy, the housing, we already talked about the housing crisis, real estate crisis here. So these turned into global recessions. Okay? <clears throat> Counter example, we don't always have a global recession. Southeast Asian crisis in the late 90s, okay? How was the US doing in the late 90s? Here, did the US have any recession in 1997 or 1998? Australia, the UK, Europe? No, right, just in Asia, Southeast Asia. Korea and uh, Thailand, Malaysia, the Philippines. So that was just the regional, <coughs> regional one. Uh, in the mid 80s in South America, they had a lot of crisis in South America in the mid 80s. Came back their debt. Japan. Japan had a big crisis in the early 90s. The stock market crashed and the real estate price crashed. Okay? But they didn't turn into international or global recessions. They were just isolated, like a disease, just isolated in one area. Did, nobody else caught the disease. Okay? So, next question is, can there be independent regional cycles? So, we, these days we have regional trade blocks. Recently, you made the Pacific Trade Agreement, right? So for the countries just around the Pacific. In Africa, we have various trade agreements. Russia has a trade agreement with some satellite states. The EU has a trade agreement. What's the trade agreement in North America called? NAFTA. NAFTA. Okay, so these are regional trade agreement, agreements. So the question is, can they promote an independent business cycle? So we have a business cycle just for NAFTA, or a business cycle for the EU, <coughs> okay, or a business cycle in the African area. So this guy from the UK showed that there is an EU business cycle. Okay? So it means that the EU countries are moving together a lot. Most EU countries, they trade mainly with other EU countries. Also, there is a cycle in NAFTA. So the U anyway, the US dominates NAFTA. So we saw Canada as a member of NAFTA, Mexico, okay? So clearly they're going to move with the US together. 
So the EU tends to move together also. So do you understand symmetric and asymmetric? If I draw a picture, I'm, I'm very... I always got an A plus at art. <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's true. They are symmetric, means the same. Are they the same? All the different. They're the same. They are not symmetric. Okay? Asymmetric, not the same. So symmetric means this is like looking in the mirror. Asymmetric is not like looking in the mirror. Okay? So it means uh, do we have a shock across several countries or just one country? So like we gave the example of Japan, we can have an asymmetric shock. Just Japan has an earthquake, okay, then just Japan has a shock. Or in Europe, the UK and Ireland, very dependent on the financial industry. There's a problem in the financial industry. The UK and Ireland has a big problem. But maybe other countries, like Germany and France, not as dependent on the financial industry, don't get as big a shock. That's an asymmetric shock. Okay, just one, one country compared to many countries having the same shock. So, the thing about the EU is that asymmetric shocks can become symmetric. Because, in, if we go in the EU, we have an asymmetric shock. Here is uh, England. Here is Europe. Right? Then we have... Uh, we have Germany here. So the UK has crisis. Just the UK, that's asymmetric shock. But then, what happens? UK people stop buying BMWs and Audis. Okay? So it turns into, can turn into a symmetric shock in, in the EU. Because Germany trades a lot with countries in the EU. Main customer of Germany. Other countries in the EU. Okay? Nowadays, Germany is trying to make a better relationship with China. They, don't, they have a problem with some people. They're not buying their products. They want to sell to you instead. Right? Are you going to buy the German products? No, why not? They're good quality. Don't want Audis or BMWs in China? No? Anyway, Germany is now, because of European crisis also, is trying to make better relationship with India and China. So it can sell. If there's a shock in the European countries, Germany doesn't have to worry that much, right? They can still sell to the other countries in the other area of the world, okay? So, <coughs> we can also think about, as well as correlation, stronger than correlation is synchronization. Do you, do you like synchronized swimming? Can you do synchronized swimming? No? Do you want to try? <laughs> Sometime? Looks like fun. Right. So synchronized is moving together, everything together. Okay? So is the cycle the same period and phase at the same time? So this can have, more than correlation, we can use this one. And using this synchronization, it says that globalization is more important than the regional trading block. Okay? So Regional trading, according to synchronization, regional trading block is important, but the globalization is more important. So in that, when we read the article, we'll try to understand a little bit better about how the globalization is affecting the business cycle. Okay? So then, do you have any question about that? So then let's uh, read the article. I'm sorry, the type is a little bit small, but I want to fit on two pages to save the rainforest. Okay, so when we read, this is, a, this is an article from The Economist in 2009. So in 2009 we, we had the crisis period. So we can see the title is about globalization and trade. So we we're going to, we said we talk a little bit about trade policy and globalization. The nuts and bolts come apart. It means something is coming apart, it's breaking up. Okay? So as global demand contracts, so we can see this word demand, 
Is contract getting bigger or getting smaller? Contract, getting bigger or getting smaller? Smaller, what's the opposite of contract? Expand, okay? Trade is slumping, slumping is going up or going down? And protectionism is rising. What is protectionism? Tax, quota. Tariffs, quota. Quotas. Donald Trump's Donald Trump's idea. Are you laughing at Donald Trump? <laughs> yes. Anything else? Uh, more regulation. More regulation in the trade. We're trying to regulate the trade. How can you regulate the trade? Apart from tax and quota. How can you do that? Have you heard of non-tariff barriers? Yes. What, what is an example of a non-tariff barrier? FTA. Uh, <laughs> quota. Yes, anything else? Car. Car. It's not. Engine. Environmental regulation? Hmm? Regulations, right? Regulations about what? About the environment, about health and safety. Okay? Uh, those kind of things. We'll have a look at some examples later. Okay? So, usually when we read this article, we're going to read the introduction and conclusion. And then we'll just go through. We'll try to find out what the main issue is, just a little bit like the case study. We get an idea from the heading what the main issue is, right? Then once we know the main issue, we'll go through the article. We'll read the first sentence of each paragraph and we'll decide. Is, do we need to read this paragraph or not? Okay? Because the first sentence of the paragraph in English is the topic sentence. It tells us the idea of the paragraph. So maybe that we can skip some paragraphs that are not relevant to the main issue. Okay? So uh, let's read the introduction. So <coughs> Moon Ju Wan, can you read? Comparisons from here. Comparison to the inflation feature is almost every discussion of the global economic crisis, but not world trade, such parallels. Parallels are especially chilling. Trade will decline alarmingly in the early 1930s. Uh, as global demand included, prices collapsed and governments embark on the destructive protectionist spiral of higher tariffs and retaliation. Okay, so do you have any question about this? What does imploded mean, going up or going down? What do you think it means? After the depression, the trade was going up or going down? Going down. Down. So you can guess, right? If you never saw this word before, you, you can understand. If you understand most of the words, okay? So the governments, we talked about the race to the bottom. So we talked about these spirals, right? Spiral, a little bit like the circle. Okay, you do this, I do this. You do this, I do this. You do this, I do this. It's a spiral, okay? So the protectionism was spiraling. So we can have a look at this graph and we can see that the trade and GDP percentage change on previous year. So in 2008, what happened to trade? Well, a little bit like the Great Depression, the trade was going down a lot, more than 10%. Okay? What about GDP? Down to nearly zero, right in the world. GDP went down, but trade went down a lot more. Okay. So then let's read the conclusion. So if we go to the last part, uh, just I put some together to fit on the page. But we, it will be during. Can you find during? One, two, three, four, five lines from the bottom. During. So uh, Kim Aron, can you read? During the depression, 
It's on the right hand side, uh, one, two, three, four, five lines from the bottom, on the very right. Yes. Very small. Myriad is uh, just a lot of, a lot of very small. They could have said the costs of a lot of very small measures, but they're journalists, so if they write very easy English like that, they don't look very smart. Why? So they have to write some very smart thing. Okay, yes? Dismantle. Dismantle means break apart. So then let's just check the headings, if we can see some heading here after we read the introduction and conclusion or some graph. We have the gears of globalization and we have healthcare ambiguity. So then just look at the title again, look at the conclusion and the introduction and discuss with your partner. What do you think is the issue of this article? What is the main issue of this article? Introduction and conclusion, we should get the idea of the main issue of the article. Uh, then sit next to somebody and share to get through. And sit next to him. Read. So now discuss with your partner, ask your partner what is the main issue. We're having a guess, we could be wrong but we're having a guess, okay? So ask your partner to guess the main issue. Thank you. 
Does the author think that's a good thing or bad thing that protectionism is rising? Bad thing, right? We see their suggestion in the end. It's like brushing your teeth. They said preventing is better than repairing. Okay? Same for your teeth. So we shouldn't have that kind of thing. So then let's start to go through the article. So we'll uh, look at the important parts. So trade is contracting again at a rate unmatched in the post-war period. Do we need to read this or just look at the graph? Just look at the graph, right? Trade is contracting, that's the point of this, uh, uh, this paragraph. Okay? So we can see that from the graph. Okay? Next paragraph. It's too soon to talk of a protectionist. Uh, it's too soon to talk of a new protectionist <coughs> spiral. Okay. Uh, maybe we can read this one. Okay. Nevertheless, on the other hand, if we have some bad policy, it can make things worse. So, do you know the G20? Yes. yes. What is the G20? Great. How do they decide who's in the G20? How can you join the G20? GDP, GDP, but Iran has a higher GDP than Turkey. Why is Turkey in the G20 and Iran is not in the G20? It's a difficult question, right? It should be. It's not made on any, any fixed, just... Turkey is friends, and Iran is not friends with other countries, right? So, it's a mixture. Mainly it's countries ranked on GDP, but also which... There's a little bit of who's friends, friends or not, right? So, sorry, Thailand. Maybe uh, Turkey might be similar to Iran, but Thailand is in the G20, but smaller than Iran or other economies, okay? Thai people are very friendly, though. <laughs> they get the number one friendliness in the world, usually. <laughs> Maybe that's why they were included, right? People like them. So, anyway, the, they meet. These guys meet, and they decide that they would eschew, stop protectionism, right? Eschew is another, basically means stop. But, this pledge has not been honoured. Do you understand pledge? Promise? They didn't honour the promise. The G20 usually makes a very vague statement. They don't usually make very specific statement. They make some statement like, we will try, we will try to slow, stop protectionism, right? So that's the main criticism of the G20, that they, their opinions are so different, it's very hard to make a specific agreement. So in the end, all they can agree on is a very vague agreement. Do you understand vague? Vague is the opposite of specific. So according to the World Bank, 17 members of the group took 70, 47 trade restricting steps since November. So this is in 2009. So they took 47 steps to restrict the trade. Modern protectionism is more subtle and varied than the 1930s. Do we need to read this one? 
how modern protectionism is different than the 1920s? How do you think it's different? We discussed a little bit at the start. In the 1920s, what did protectionism look like? Or 1930s? Tariffs. Tax, tariffs, right? Nowadays, what does it look like? Voluntary barriers. Non-tariff barriers or regulations, right? So it's more subtle. Do you understand subtle? Are you a subtle person? Are you subtle? If, if I ask you, does this jumper sweater look nice? And you say, no, it's not. It's a horrible color. <laughs> what kind of green is that? Very bright green. Are you a leprechaun? Something like that, right? Are you a fairy? Right? Are, they, are they subtle? Are they subtle or not subtle? The opposite of subtle is direct. Right? So that's not subtle. Okay? If they were subtle, they would say, well, actually, I prefer your black sweater. I think your black sweater is very nice. That's subtle. Okay? It's not really doing things directly or saying things directly. It's kind of a hidden way. Right? Are you a subtle person? Yes or direct? So nowadays countries are trying to be subtle when they're doing their protectionism. They're trying to hide it. Okay? Their real intention or their real feeling, trying to hide it. Okay? <coughs> so uh, they're more varied. They have more different types. So here we can see uh, protectionism different types of protectionism. So here we have tighter licensing requirements, import bans, anti-dumping, such things. Rich countries have used discriminata discriminatory procurement provisions in their fiscal stimulus bills and offered subsidies. So these are kind of protectionism we have these days. Do you understand subsidies? We're going to talk about it in more detail. So the US gave a big subsidy to their car industry. That's a form of protectionism. If the US car industry had been allowed to collapse, would Kia have been happy? If GM had collapsed, would Kia be happy? Yes. Yes, they're going to sell more cars in the US, right? They would say GM is being badly run. Okay, let them collapse, let them fall, and then we'll come in and sell cars in the US. But US government says no. Even though they're badly run and, and losing company, they're an American company providing jobs in America, so what am I going to do? I'm going to give them a subsidy. What is a subsidy? Money, right? Just give them money. Here you go. Right? Here's some money. They could be a loan. It could have strings attached. It could have no strings attached. Okay? So, also, when the US made their fiscal stimulus, government spending bill, they made some restriction. This money must be spent in the US. This money must be spent on US products. That's another type of protectionism. Okay. Uh, what else did we see here? Do you understand anti-dumping? Yes. Yeah. So it, it, there's some debate whether the co countries are dumping their goods or not. So the countries try to say, yes, you're dumping. Right? Uh, import bans. So, I already said that Korea bans the Irish beef because Ireland had some disease of the cows about 15 years ago. Right? And I think Korea is one of the only countries in the world which still doesn't accept the Irish beef. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Uh, because the Korea protects the Korean sector. Okay, you said that, not me. <laughs> Or uh, some licensing. So regulation. You want to sell drugs in my country? Okay, you have to get a special license or that kind of thing. I mean, pharmaceutical drugs, right? Uh, legal drugs like medicine. Okay. So <clears throat> we can think that the world has less to fear from protectionism in the past. Okay, why? The growth of global supply chain. Do you understand the global supply chain? Yeah. What is the global supply chain? Apple made their product China. Yes. And 
complete product selling to other country mm -hmm. and it is global chains. So t give me more countries. Where do they, they make this in this country, this in this country, this in this country? So just China and the US wouldn't really be global, right? Yeah. So can you add some more countries in the middle? When Apple makes an iPhone? Korea, can you add in Korea, Japan? Taiwan. Taiwan. So some part is of the iPhone is made in Taiwan, some part in Korea. Yeah. Right, then maybe put together, then transport to China, yeah. then transport to the US, finally put together and packaged, yeah. or put to another country. That is the global supply chain, okay? In the old days, we had Ricardo, who said it's better to trade cheese from the UK to Portugal and wine from Portugal to the UK. But nowadays, the trade is not that simple. Okay? There are a lot of countries involved because of global supply chain. Supply chain means the different steps in making the product. So if we are making the iPhone, we have to get the material, raw material, Okay, they use some rare earth material. Do you know rare earth material? Yeah. To make the screen. How many countries in the world have that kind of material? Not that many, right? Maybe China. They get the rare earth material in China. Okay, then they go to Japan. Makes the screen. Okay? In Japan. In the meantime, Korea is making some semiconductor or some other part, right? Chips. Let's say the chip. Right, Taiwan is making plastic. Right, just some, some parts. They all they all come together. They go to Malaysia or somewhere else. Okay, and they put the phone together. That's the global supply chain. So in that case, there's not as much uh, incentive for a country to make tariffs. Okay, because. If I make a tariff on chips coming into Malaysia, then I'm going to get harmed. Okay? Or if, I, if I'm in Japan and I make a tar tariff on raw earth material, I need the raw earth material, it's part of the product. Okay? So we don't, in this case with the global supply chain, making the protectionism is not, as, is not going to work as well. So. Uh, then we can move down to the gears of globalization. <clears throat> so, global recession means a collapse in demand. So, we had also a credit crunch. Do you understand credit crunch? Less credit. So, they refer to that time as the credit crunch. People don't get loans. Okay? So, we can see that here is the graph. This is the mer merchandise export value, okay? Change, percentage change on the year earlier. So are people's exports going up or down? This is plus, this is negative. Going down. Down, we saw trade was going down, right? So all, we can see this is a little bit of the global supply chain. Everybody's exports is going down, okay? Very, quite similar, except we saw Australia. Australia was booking the trend, okay? Australia was going up. Maybe Australia is a little bit out, out the side. Okay. So South Korea's U.S. exports down. South Korea's exports down. So what explains this? Vertical specialization or global supply chains we just mentioned. Okay. So you should know what is vertical specialization. What does it mean to specialize? What does it mean, specialize? More attention. More Focus on one point. Okay, so these days countries are specializing in one part, trying to specialize in one step of the supply chain. Okay? Rather than just making cheese or wine, we are focusing on just one part of the supply chain. So we this guy says, countries now specialize not in final products, but in steps of the process of production. Okay? So, in this case, trade grows much faster, because 
the goods have to cross the borders several times. Okay? So they keep crossing the border. Trade is getting higher. So they give the example here, a tractor in America used American steel and parts in the past, but now it has steel from India. It's stamped and pressed in Mexico, and then it's sold in the US. Okay? So we have the different parts. India's focusing on manufacturing the steel. Mexico is work focusing on working with the steel. Okay? The other country then puts it together. So then all of the countries are affected together. Can you understand this idea? So vertical specialization, does that mean that the business cycle is moving more closely or further away? More closely. Can you understand that? Global supply chain, vertical specialization means that the business cycle, international business cycle is getting more similar. Okay? We can see here the exports going down. So here's a good example. Uh, the US, their imports went down by 20%, but their exports also went down by 20%. Okay? So, the US uh, imports, or sorry, exports finished vehicles to the non NAFTA countries. So, GM is selling the finished car to the non NAFTA countries. <coughs> and their exports to NAFTA partners consist of parts and components, mostly which return to the US in imported vehicles. So the US sells the car part and component, like the door or the electro electronic control, right, or the brake. And then it's assembled and put together in Mexico or Canada and then sold back to the US. Okay? So the imports from NAFTA went down 20%. Exports to NAFTA went down 20%. Can you understand that idea? The US were not selling as many parts to Mexico, and Mexico weren't selling as many cars back to the US. So that's just a simple A and B relationship of the vertical supply chain. Your exports are my imports, my imports are your exports. So, a kind of way. <coughs> so, We have here just some developing countries are using tariffs. We're going to skip that part because it's not uh, as important. Here it says, although increased tariffs are a cause for concern, they are not the only form of protection. Okay? Two thirds of the trade restriction measures are non-tariff barriers. So more, most of the trade restriction is non-tariff barriers. So here we can see some examples. So we're looking here at Indonesia. Okay, so let's have a look at the example of the non-tariff barriers. So we have Indonesia on the second page. So uh, Min Okki, can you read? So here we get the idea of some health and safety or other type of <coughs> regulation that the governments are making. So then the next part is about anti-dumping, we'll skip that. And then we'll look at what are wealthy countries doing more, more commonly. So uh, 
Yun Sang Hao, can you read that one? Which countries? Which countries weapon of choice so far is neither tariffs nor non tariff barriers to imports. They have been keen users instead of subsidies to trouble the, the domestic in industries, particularly car makers. Some economists, such as Jim Grossman, Grossman of Princeton University, cite this as evidence that global sourcing has changed the political economy of protection. The American automobile, automobile industry no longer lobbies for direct protection as it used to, as it used to, because it imports much of its value and competes with foreign foreign firms that assemble their cars in America. Car makers now prefer explicit subsidies and. The word, the word is replace replete in small explored examples. Examples besides America, Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Britain, Canada, China, France, Germany, Italy, and Sweden have also pro provided direct or indirect subsidies to car makers. The World Bank reckons that proposed subsidies for the car industry amounts um, amount to 48 billion. Nearly 9% of this is in rich countries where it can be easily easily be slipped into budgetary packages to stimulate demand. Hey, do you have any question about the vocabulary in those paragraphs? <laughs> Reckon? Yes. Uh, reckon, where do you see that? It depends on the situation. Which line is it in? Uh, the last one. The World Bank reckons thinks. Think, to think. Their opinion. The World Bank says. Calculates. Calculates, think, say, a kind of meaning. Okay, so the problem with subsidies is that they can cause the production to switch from the efficient plant like in Korea or Japan or Central Europe, to inefficient plant in the US or the UK, right? So the government is going against the idea of capitalism. They're helping the inefficient plants to stay alive. Okay? So that's the worry about subsidies. So just, uh, just the ambiguity we're not going to read, it just says that WTO ambiguity means it's not clear. So the WTO doesn't have very clear and strict rule about subsidies. So that's one of the problems. Okay? So just we want to learn from this article about trade policy, the kind of trade policy that countries are doing to try and stimulate demand in their own country, like subsidies and protectionism by regulations. The reason they're doing that is to stimulate demand in their own country of their own products. Okay? Uh, and stop the imports. But that's not a good thing for the world, right? So this, it, it, if there's less of that, it would be better. And the other point is that we can see vertical specialization and the global supply chain is making globalization, right? Is making the business cycle move closer together between all the countries, okay? So that's what we wanted to learn from that article. So, <clears throat> if you want, you can read the rest of the parts we skipped in your own time. Okay, but the main points we want to look at there is vertical specialization, global supply chain, and the non-tariff barriers. Okay, like, do you have any question about that? So then next Wednesday we'll do a review. So this up until today is on the midterm exam, right? So next Wednesday we'll do a review and then on Friday we'll have the exam. So you can look back at the video and the reading and the PPT. There's also some book 
an online book which we said at the start of the course, right? You can also read if you want. Thank you.